Hello everyone, welcome back. In today's off matter video, we're doing our third or fourth installment of the Chromatic Fire subclass pick, with us this time focusing on Arc. Arc Chromatic Fire provides users the ability to blind targets after landing and defeating targets via Chromatic Vision hits. Although small and blast radius, it's arguably one of the best subclasses to pick if you want to pick off major to ultra threats without them ever getting too close. Wish Ender would be the perfect choice here for this alone, but I decided that bad juju should be given a chance here, and boy, does it not fail you. A big weapon damage boost, fast ability regen, and super, and non-stop blind effect, which is all easy to use in setup, is what you're going to get if you decide to give this arc build a try. So, to start, you're going to want to have Arc Soul, where casting your Rift will grant you and allies a Arc Soul. While Amplified, your Arc Soul is by faster. Then you want Electric Sight of Mind, where defeating a target with Arc abilities, or defeating Jolt targets, creates unlit traces. Collecting traces makes you Amplified. The Arc Souls, along with the Ionic Traces effect, will allow us to have a supercharged Arc Soul at all times, which is used against the minor to major threats. This, along with the constant arc blast being produced via our grenades, weapons and melee of choice, means that we can place ourselves in very dangerous areas and not worry about being wiped out as long as the damage being done on our end is high enough and freely available. On top of that, our exotic chromatic fire can also blind enemies if defeated via precision hits, so there's that as well. For the fragments, spark of resistance, where while surrounded you are more resistant to income attacks by 40%, Spark of Amplitude, where rapidly defeating targets while amped, creates orbs of power. Spark of Ions, where defeating a jolt targets, creates ionic traces. And Spark of Shock, where your arc grenades drop targets. Ideally, having the option to create ionic traces on the fly will help with getting back our abilities much faster, while on top of our stats and mods to further support. This, along with Spark of Amplitude, basically means that as long as we keep getting amped, and as long as we keep netting kills, our ability boosting mods will always stay active in and out of battles. This is the general setup that best suits the film that our build is going for, as we will be creating quite a bit of orbs compared to teammates. For the mods and stat section, both discipline and strength will have the highest stat around compared to everything else we will be using. From here, recovery will also follow and allow us to make use of the arc souls. At tier 7 for discipline, We'll be able to produce arc grenades at a very fast rate with font of focus added so you can get a tier 10 stat easily. With pulse grenades being used, it will push our stat to around a minute cooldown rate, which is exceptional considering how powerful pulse grenades are thanks to a 20% buff they've received quite a while back. On top of that, ionic traces will also speed up the recovery rate for this stat alone and will most likely push it down to around 50 seconds cooldown rate once actioned. This alone, when combined with Ashes to Assets and Bad Juju's Super Energy Regen, means that we can have a low intellect stat and still benefit greatly from it. Mini is also the same with tier 7 base stat, and then add on Font Vigor to the mix for a tier 10 overall stat. With Ball Lightning as our main melee, this will push our stat down to around a 57 second cooldown rate, which is handy for ideally spamming our melee out of range when needed. Not super strong to use, the melee is a nice additional bonus to apply onto a tougher enemy when you really want to melt through their defences. Then, recovery at tier 9 will give us a 51 second cooldown rate, which is more than enough to use and gather our arc souls over and over again. For the armour charge to retain the following system we have in play, charged up will allow us to hold onto more armour charges as we play, having the connect cypher mod to create orbs of power via our weapons, Reaper and powerful attraction mods will make orb creation and collection a lot more easier for the general user. This along with times 2 arc weapon surge mod, times 1 connect surge mod and the time dilation mod means we can become a constant orb factory who is capable of always being buffed without moving about too much. Lastly, don't forget to have the power preservation mod on as well because of common sense. Now lastly, weapons being used will be the bad juju exotic pulse. This weapon has seen quite a lot of action for those who want to focus on getting their super up and ready fast. It was highly usable back in the day when it was first released, but over time has seen the weapon fall from grace, with thanks to how super energy is now recovered by players. As of now, the weapon still isn't that common to see, but it does still feel good to use, with thanks to the exotic primary tuning that gave exotic primaries a 20% damage buff. This has made the weapon feel a bit more consistent to use in end game content, as against dungeons or GM level threats, we can at least defeat them before we run out of mag fully on. 
This is important as the weapon needs to net kills after kills to build up his damage stacking and just time is one will be enough to really see the weapon fly. I thought that combining this with Chaos Reach and Chromatic Fire will provide the best choice for players to fully maximize the setup we have as the stun created via Chromatic Fire will stun them long enough for me to defeat a target then go to the next target and get a damage buff going and repeat. This has worked out very well for me and I've seen great improvements from adjusting it over time. Now looking at our third version or I believe our fourth version of the Chromatic Fire build but this time with Arc, the following allows players to quickly garner super energy back fast with escalating damage build up, fast ability regen and very fast super use that makes it perfect for any content you have in mind. With Arc subclass chosen for Chromatic Fire, every time we land a position hit and defeat a target, they will explode and trigger a blinding Arc Blast that affects those nearby it. At first, it was quite small to notice as it didn't seem like it would make a huge difference, but after using it in content where enemies like to bunch up a lot, the blinding effect actually became a lot more helpful. A single blind is capable of shutting down minor, major and ultra threats for a few seconds and with something like this in GMs, it makes taking on major threats with primaries a whole lot safer. Bad Juju has also been recently buffed in terms of his recoil pattern and the exotic primary weapon buff by 20%, so now it feels a lot more better to use when taking on combatants in harder content. Although not super strong, it does feel like it takes less time to take out harder hidden combatants compared to before, as once you get your damage buff going and they have the surge mod as well, you'll then start to notice just how powerful the weapon really starts to feel. Combining the following weapon with Command of Fire makes an interesting combo that fits well within the use of Arc subclass. Our short subclass cooldown rate when combined with Bad Juju means that we can garner super energy fast, which is what we're already aware of, but the blinding effect will also pull off makes it much more easier for us to increase our Juju's damage stack when enemies are stunned and also will auto reload our weapon over and over again. If you want, you can add on the blinding grenades as well as the mix as for double blind effect and to be fair, I feel that that would be a better choice to use compared to using something like pulse grenades. You don't need a lot to make it work, but it's fantastic once you do get the swing of things going. Personally, once we get a season where pulse rifles become the anti-champion mod again, I can see the build being very useful for quick burst shots against many bosses to boss DPS. If that's not the case, then perhaps you should try this in PvP instead. It's definitely got an appeal going on there. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and sub bar here. I will leave a dim link for the build below and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all and I hope to see you again soon.